Hi, I'm Jason Walcott and this is Walcott Fine Art. One technique that you might have heard me talk a lot about in my videos is glazing. So today I'm going to show you what that is and how to do it. So let's take a look at glazing. So hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to go over some of the basics of glazing and I'll explain what it is exactly and show you some quick basic techniques on how to use it. So normally when a person does uh, what's called the traditional a la prima style uh, oil painting, uh, which basically means all at once, which is usually the style I work on, then, then you're kind of putting uh, all the color down, like let's say we're mixing a blue-gray for sky. Now you're just painting color all in one layer in one sitting. So you can see that I've got this little magic marker uh, little drawing I did here. And so if I go over that, you can see that the paint covers up what's underneath it. Okay, now glazing is a technique that you can use. Uh, and it's more of a traditional technique that was uh, used more often in the old, uh, older days by the old masters, although many artists still use it today, so it's a worthwhile technique to know. And basically what glazing is, is it's putting a th very thin, transparent layer of color over top what's already there so that the under layer shows through, but you can change the color, change the temperature by using that transparent layer that's on top of it. So in order to glaze, you're going to need some kind of medium. Obviously, that's the most important thing. Uh, and the reason for that is because in oil painting, you always want to follow the, the rule of fat over lean, which means you want each layer of the painting, you know, as you build up layers, each layer should have the same amount of oil or more, more oil in it than the layer before it. And the reason for that is as oil dries, it tends to sh uh, shrink or and expand and all this kind of thing. So if you put a real thin, lean layer, or what they, you know, they use the word lean to mean a layer with very little oil in it, over top of an oily layer, then you're going to get cracking and flaking and those kind of problems can show up very quickly. So... If you're going to glaze, you always want to make sure that you use uh, either an alkyd medium like liquid. Liquid's a great one to use, or a traditional, you know, medium that's got oil in it. Uh, do not glaze using just like thinner, because that will, things will fall apart very quickly on you <laughs> if you do that. So, in order to glaze, basically what you'll need, you'll need a softer brush. Uh, these mongoose brushes from Rosemary and Company are great brushes to try. Uh, they also make th synthetic sables and things like that that you can use that are great. Um, but usually you'll want a softer brush like that for glazing techniques rather than the more traditional uh, bristle brushes which are used for just straightforward oil painting. So basically, in order to glaze, you'll need a, a transparent color. Um, you can do an effect called s uh, scumbling, which is basically glazing with a opaque or semi-opaque color, but for today's demo, I'm just going to do a traditional glazing. Uh, so any color that's transparent, like ultramarine, transparent red oxide, a lot of the phthalo colors are transparent, the quinacridone colors are all transparent, and you'll, as you get to know your paints, you'll come to learn which colors are transparent and which ones are not. So, so obviously, if we're doing a transparent layer, you want a transparent color, of which Ultramarine blue is a great example. So I have some traditional gel medium here that I'm using. So you're going to just take some medium, basically, and then mix a tiny little bit of color with it. And see, see, you need that medium because you need something to form that layer for the glazing layer you know, without thinning down the pigment too much. You can't just use paint that's thinned with thinner. 
So once you have that glazing color mixed together, now I just drew out these two little checkerboard patterns with a Sharpie. And then you just basically make a thin layer of color that goes over whatever you want to show through underneath. And the reason it's good to use the softer brushes uh, with this is it kind of eliminates some of the real heavy brush strokes. Uh, and glazes tend to look better if they're even, even layers of color. So, now I didn't put a lot of color in that. So you could, you know, if you wanted, you wanted a darker, more saturated look, you know, you can increase the color, that you, you know, saturation that you pigment load you put into it and it'll get darker. But you can still see that the checkerboard underneath shows through. So, a long time ago, the old masters, a traditional technique that they would sometimes use would be to do an underpainting in a monochromatic color, like, you know, burnt umber and white and then let that dry and then glaze over layers of color on top of it. And that's why some of those older paintings have that that glow to them that's really, really beautiful, like almost like jewels or stained glass because they use those transparent layers of color. Now, of course, the one thing you want to remember is if you're going to use this technique, uh, the, the, you have to, if you were going to go over this again, you have to let, make sure that this layer is dry first. Uh, otherwise, it would just pick up what was underneath and it would all kind of mush together uh, into a mess. So if you're using the technique for glazing like this, then you're going to have to let each layer dry in between layers. So it's a technique that takes longer. Um, so it takes more patience to do it that way. That's why a, a medium like Liquin is great because this is alkyd based. This will dry in 24 hours. So if you glaze a layer with this as your medium, then you know in 24 hours you could go over it again with another layer. And just to do a second example here, I'll glaze a layer with the transparent red oxide. Again, you just want to mix it a little with your medium. And then just, you know, Glaze that layer right over top of your underpainting. Uh, but the, the main thing to remember with glazing is you have to use that glazing medium. Uh, they make mediums uh, that you can find specifically for glazing. Uh, but like I said, you could also use Alkade. You could also use um, like Liquin. Uh, you can use a traditional glazing medium like um, one made with uh, stand oil uh, with a little bit of... Um, Demar varnish in it, things like that. So, uh, uh, but you have to use a medium. That's the most important thing to remember. You can't just go over this with a thin layer of paint uh, because that won't work. So that is a basic sort of, you know, elementary explanation of what glazing is and how it works. And so I hope that this demonstration was helpful to you. So now when you hear me mention glazing, in some of my videos, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's not a technique that I use in my own work a tremendous amount. Um, occasionally I will to like correct small areas if they need a little adjusting or something. Uh, but a lot of artists do use this technique and it may be something that people are interested in. So I hope this was helpful to you and thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time!